I believe in miracles. I believe that a condition you came with, you actually can leave it there. Yes. So when prayers are going on, don't just be looking at other people. If you are sick in your body, you must believe that I'm ready to be healed. You have some lump, some growth. Don't sit down and say, how will it disappear? I've taught you. It's just an interplay of energy and matter. It is true. Some terminal disease, HIV, whatever blood condition, maybe genotype, whatever it is. Don't say God cannot heal you. You're here, you have all kinds of bone conditions. Don't sit back and say, look at the size of my bone, can I walk? Brothers and sisters, we are talking the Lord Jesus Christ here. Exalted as both Lord and Christ. How about impartations? Some of you are in their need of many graces. Graces that create new conditions. You cannot be walking in a territory and everybody is looking at you as if you are a piece of rag. It means there is a condition that is responsible for that mockery and that shame. And I'm telling you in the presence of God that condition can change. When you say it's my background, what you are simply saying is there is a condition. God can give you another condition. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burden for in the sanctuary God. So, as a normal human being, you can hug, you can shake, you can greet. But when Jesus comes, you will be amazed. The same words you were hearing from morning now does not become the words of a man again. When these words begin to come, please listen to me. I want you to just imagine light coming from the throne to your life. And what is it doing? Changing conditions. Changing conditions. And you check yourself and find out, just like a dream, is gone. Just like a dream. And there are certain conditions that you may not be able to verify physically because they don't come with pain. But you believe at the instance of God's word. The power of God is touching that woman on purple. Help that woman. I'm seeing like oil being poured on her. Oh, madam, your life is about to change in a way that will surprise you. Jesus, the Son of God. Please pray strings for me. Listen. I used to watch this years ago in the meetings of Catherine Kuhlman, T.L. Osborne. And I would see these people would just come with childlike faith, Reinhard Bonke. And when they would teach, they would tell you that Jesus is here. And you would think it's a joke. Within minutes, brothers and sisters, you will see all kinds of miracles. And I said, God, there has to be an explanation to this. Just like that. And then I learned that it is not just like that. When the anointing comes, when you are frying palm oil in the kitchen, women, look up please. You know what happens to that kitchen? As soon as fire, what happens? Sometimes the condition can be so harsh it does not speak to you, but it will make you run out of that kitchen. So if you are a demon, for instance, when the fire is applied, and that kitchen is you, there is something that that fire is able to do. And it will make what was there, help them, to leave. You see how deliverance happens? Yes. Just because a word is spoken, be free, be delivered. No, no. It's not just a word speaking. There, there are innumerable company of angels. 
the power of God moving from place to place. What is the assignment? To find out what is not consistent with the character of the Christ. We have called this a miracle service. And the Bible says everything Adam called it, that was the name thereof. When Jesus appeared to me and stretched his hands towards me, I'm telling you, I know the light entered me. Whether it entered through my head, whether it entered through my chest, I don't know. Don't ask how the power of God will get into your body. <laughs> the power of God is not a needle. The power of God is not a tube that is passed through you. It can come in and begin to correct things. And that when it's time to testify, you will find yourself running to come and stand and say, Jesus, this really happened. How about conditions in your office? How about conditions in your bank account? How about conditions in your, your life, your family? Apostle, we have tried and tried to build. For seven years, this house has refused to be completed. I tell you, there is a condition making that happen. By the time God releases something upon you, remember, all blessings come from God, I've taught you, through man to man. That is the dynamic. Like you hear people testify. Someone calls you, even while service is going on, and says, where are you? I don't know why I just feel like blessing you. Now you understand a condition. Reproach is a condition. Infirmity is a condition. Spirits merely enforce conditions. That is the assignment in a human body or in an environment to enforce conditions. Conditions that create outcomes that negate the speakings of the word. A miracle service, therefore, is a platform that allows the word of God in partnership with his power to move in the midst of his people and begin to correct conditions. Correction that can be scientifically proven, spiritual in origin. Miracles are platforms where both science and faith agree. Let me repeat myself. Miracles are platforms where both faith and science agree. Faith says be healed. Science confirms that it happened to you. Faith says be delivered. Science confirms that it happened. Every true miracle must have a scientific expression. Because they are the two platforms that explain man and the occurrences in our cosmos. Faith takes care of the realm of the spirit and the supernatural. Science gives interpretation and meaning to what happens in our physical environment. None of them is anti-God in itself. It starts from the realm of the spirit. Light be. And it manifests physically as light. So the healing starts from the realm of the spirit. And physically. Your life and your destiny. Your children. Physically. Like the dear ones who shared their testimony here. Can you imagine that? One word just comes by the spirit. And dear people of God, look at this. One word to a politician, may God shift you. And it will look like just a word until you see the forces that fought you begin to come. And you will know that a condition has changed. How about a businessman? You're trying to do everything you know to do. But there is a condition that authorizes both men and spirits to fight you. My assignment tonight is to walk in partnership with the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit to engineer this transformation by turning the conditions in your life around and this by the grace of god will be faithfully done tonight are you ready please rise up on your feet just two prayer points and I'll begin to pray for you. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to insist tonight. Please be intentional. Insist by way of prayer. That this condition. The Bible says. That the things that are seen are temporal. 
but the things that are unseen are eternal. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The things that are seen are temporal. The sickness that I see is temporal. The oppression that I see is temporal. If someone pray, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Tonight it is, I, I began to sense this even before I left for the miracle service in Zaria. Just help those under the anointing already. I sense that tonight, God is not only visiting individuals, but God is extending it even to families. I began to sense that right from Wednesday or so. That, you see, there are some of our family members that may not have the faith or the discernment to receive. But God is using you tonight as an altar. Not only to speak for yourself, but to speak for families. Are you ready to pray? Now lift your voice in one minute and say, Father, not just me, but everyone connected to me. Please pray. Not just me. I pray. Online pray. Jesus the lifter. Jesus the healer. Jesus the restorer. Hallelujah. 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 The final thing I will tell you is please be sensitive to divine instructions. You see, under the influence of the Spirit, there are many things that don't make sense. But in the childlikeness of the gospel, Romans 15 and verse 19, let that be the last scripture. Let me show you something. Paul is speaking to the church in Rome. 15 and verse 19. It says, Through mighty signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God, oh dear, it says, that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have preached fully, preached the gospel of Christ. So the gospel is not fully preached. Until there are miracles, signs, and wonders. Right now, just before we pray, just stand still everybody where you are. No shouting, no nothing. I just want you to bring for me those who are under the anointing, whether inside or outside. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. We'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing, Christ is risen from the dead. Sing, Christ is risen. Sing, Christ is risen. Sing, Christ is risen from the dead. Because I, I just I began to see angelic activities. Just moving across, inside and outside, touching people. And the Lord is giving me an instruction. Just bring the people out. Some of you, it's not just individuals. God is touching families, using individuals. This is a miracle service. Now, hold on, please. Hold on, please. Um, 
the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing like fire. I saw the number 43 and I'm seeing it come on people. And the Lord is telling me He's visiting foundations. That's what I'm hearing. Right now, I stretch my hands inside and outside. 43. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where they are, but I stretch my hands. I've been visited by the Spirit of God. Negative foundation. Negative foundation. Negative foundation. Negative foundation. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. Bring them out. This is the place. Of surrender. The word of God. This is the place where your life is changed. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me chains. I always see this in the miracle services. I'm seeing chains on the feet of people. And the Lord is not asking me to stretch my hand. And right now as I stretch my hand, every chain, chains of ancestry that have held anyone down, bring them out. I decree and declare, right now, chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. I pray the word of God upon your life, upon your destiny. The Lord is still breaking chains. Chains are responsible for circles of retrogression. Retrogression. Nothing moving in your life. There are still more people inside, outside, following online. Anyone whose life has been stagnated. In the name of Jesus. Be delivered now. 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 Atmosphere is now Chains be broken Chains be Holy Spirit Who now Heaven's open Heaven's Hallelujah. open Who is Olua Kemi? Hold on please I'm hearing a name Kemi Olua Kemi we have to be very fast tonight. God is visiting people. I'm hearing a name, Olua Kemi. I don't know who that is. Who is that? What's your name? Akemi. What's your name? Olua Kemi. From where? From Oyo State. Oyo State. Where are you from? From Obomosho. Obomosho. Lift your hands and shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That oppression leaves you now. Never to return to you. Help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, hold on please. This woman, please come. Bring her. Just be careful with the people with the... My God, tonight is a night of divine supernatural visitation. I'm, I'm just... The Hallelujah. Now, me. Those outside, the overflow outside, please stretch your hands. I want to pray for you right now. I'm seeing that the power of God is coming on certain people. I'm seeing the number 18. I'm going to pray for those inside. I don't know why God is ministering to those outside. But right now, those outside, 
at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And I want you to bring all the people under the anointing. Outside. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, I command those devils to leave. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, bring them outside. Right now, I decree and I declare by the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. My God, I'm seeing yokes breaking. Breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Let there be miracles right now. In the name of Jesus. Strong deliverance is even for families. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let there be deliverance now. Those outside yokes are breaking, 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 breaking for those outside. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now those of us inside, at the count of three, I want to pray for you now. Please pay attention. It is true that there are spirits that oppress people. It is true that there are spirits that sit upon the destinies of people. And continue to sabotage the purposes of God. Mysterious occurrences in your life. Habits that you cannot stop. Patterns that cannot be broken. Are you ready now? All the other overflows following online. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. That name that is above every other name. As you shout that name, I'm praying for you. The power of God will rest on you. Please bring them out. Father, honor your word tonight. That everyone who is oppressed, every family under captivity, under the sound of my voice, as they shout that name, exalted as both Lord and Christ, let there be deliverance right now. Are you ready, Koinonia? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus! Release your destinies now. Please bring them out, inside, outside. Release your destinies now. Release your families now. Hey, Pat, take it, take it, take it. Help that woman, please. Release them now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Release them now. Please bring them. Bring all of them out. I'd like you to open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare, I am free from everything that ties me down. Please pray. Lift your voice and pray. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Are you praying? Are you praying? Don't be distracted. I declare liberty. I am free by the power of the Holy Ghost. All the overflow in the name of Jesus. Free. He who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Every spirit manifesting in your dreams taking you back and programming things to your destiny. Right now I declare fire at the count of three. One, two, three. Every devil of from the dream realm, I cast you. Let them go now. Release your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here by the name Ishaku? I'm hearing the name Ishaku. Is there someone with that name? Your name? Huh? What's your name? Daniel Ishaku. What's your name? Daniel Ishaku. Daniel Ishaku. 
Madam, is your name Ishaku? Hold on. Where is your son? You couldn't make it. What is his name? Ishaku. Where is he? He's in Gawaki. I need to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, please, if that is your, not your name, please don't come out. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, according to the word of the Lord, I pray for you. Right now, a visitation comes not only to your life, but to your entire family. I stretch my hands towards you and I declare, be free now. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life, I bring you freedom. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord is telling me He wants to help them, please, up the balcony. The Lord is speaking to me. There are families where it is the women that feed the men. No matter how hardworking you are, the husband is the wife and the wife is the husband, practically speaking. And it may not necessarily be because of laziness. It's just a spiritual pattern that has destroyed people. Right now I'm praying. Anyone connected to such a family or such a condition, right now the power of God is coming upon you. And in case you are standing here and your loved ones are victims of that pattern, it is the Lord revealing this to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hallelujah. Now, this is an interesting thing I'm seeing, but let me pray it anyway. There are people, the Lord is telling me, it started from last year, using the guise of the pandemic, but it's not really about the pandemic. You have been losing money consistently till now. Consistently. Whether you are in business or not, money has been a gradual decline by the Spirit of God. We are not worshipping money here, but if God gives a word on that wise, we must respond to what He's saying. I want to pray for you now. Because there are some of you, altars have been activated using the guise of the pandemic. You will be surprised to see what happens to you now. Father, I am praying, even as you have instructed me, there are individuals here and there are families that this spirit has tied down the resources of the family and continues to bring them down right now. Let the power of God touch you where you are. Let the power of God touch you where you are. Let the power of God touch you where you are. Let the power of God touch you where you are. Let the power of God touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a very interesting revelation. This is for pastors. This word I'm about to give is for pastors. I'm hearing in my spirit that the seasons of retrogression, the seasons of delay, you are a man of God here, please listen, because something is about to come upon you. If there are people under the anointing at this word, I just want you to bring them out. Right now, you are, you are in ministry here. The Lord is saying the powers that are holding you down, whether male or female, you are in ministry, missions, pastoral ministry. Right now, I decree and declare, there is speed that is coming. May that grace come upon you right now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Help them, please. Take that grace now. No more delay. An unction is coming from heaven, changing your condition by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Reverend sir, the Lord is giving me a word for your wife. And the Lord is saying she's stepping into a new season of the prophetic and of favor. These two graces. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, Madam, by the Spirit of the living God, and according to the word of the Lord, don't bring her out, just keep her there. Step into that season of the prophetic and activation of the grace and the gifting of the Spirit upon your life. And also of the season of favor. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing 11 people. This is a vision I always see. When God is speaking to me about promotion or increase. I usually see men climbing ladders. And I'm seeing 11 people. The power of God is coming on them right now. The Lord is telling me that your lifting is a strange season. You know I began to announce this from last year. Please believe what I'm telling you. In the name of Jesus. Father where are they? Matesko di prakatosia. Whether in career. In business. In politics. Right now take that grace. That grace that lifts. Take that grace. In governance and politics. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus. You are climbing that ladder and no power will stop you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help this man please. Help honorable. Please hold him. I speak to you again by prophecy. That in the name of Jesus Christ. For as many as have seen. Some of you are in a season of promotion. But as it is there are councils sitting down. And there are voices that want to bring you down. I stand by the grace God has given me. Help them please. I push you now. Step into a new season. I push you now. By prophecy. Step into a new season. This woman holding a phone, I'm seeing fire coming on her. This one holding a phone in front. Right now, I don't know what it is, but there is mighty deliverance coming for you and your family. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke everything that is not of God. Let it release you and let it release your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing a name Jennifer. My goodness. There is such breakthrough coming for that family. Who is Jennifer? Don't tell lies. Please, we are serious people here. I told you by faith you can connect. It doesn't have to be. Please, let's. So that there is a breakthrough. Because I'm seeing. I just saw what looked like coals of fire on an altar. And I just saw it being destroyed. And I saw a door open. This is what I saw. In the name of Jesus Christ, Shadike Parakata, Lekete Brekete Kete Kotos Kotopakata, Embrekete Katia. For this family, those of you standing in front right now, every altar tying your destiny down, Pares Kete Brekata, right now, no matter how long it has stayed, those in front here, fire is coming upon you. I set that altar now, in the name of Jesus, I set that altar right now on fire. He must let you go now. I release your destiny. I release your destiny. Everything holding your lifting. It comes under judgment now. Madam, this woman. Please tap that woman for me. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying your life is about to change now. I release that grace upon you. Right now. This unction. For if this week will not pass, madam, you will see the way God will turn help her, please. God is turning things around in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, let me tell you this. There is a fearful side to God when he begins to move. Just like that, he will turn things around. Just like that. All of them out for the name, that name I call? Huh? From Kano. Okay, you are at the basement. Let me pray for them. I'm going to pray for you. All these ones that are out, my dear, that lady on maroon, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Go ahead. I command that spirit to leave your family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Like these miracles. There are so many right to the back. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that these miracles remain perfected in your bodies. And for those who have been healed online, we decree and declare that the same power that has touched you, may that power remain with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Please rise up on your feet and stretch your hands towards the prayer request. We're about to pray. 
I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody receives from God. Not everybody may be sick, not everybody may be oppressed, but everybody needs the supernatural hand of God in some way. Please, as an act of faith, would you do well to stretch your hands towards the altar and just begin to receive. Declare by the Spirit that these Egyptians I see today, I see them no more forever. Is someone praying? You don't have to kneel. I'll do the kneeling for you. But please, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please pray. There are so many prayer requests here coming from several nations, several people across the body of Christ, writing their requests before the Lord. We decree and declare miracles in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, God answers prayers here. Believe it. Go ahead and pray. Father, we decree and we declare supernatural miracles right now. Miracles. Creative miracles. Miracles of restoration. Miracles of healing. Miracles of salvation. Miracles of deliverance. Miracles of provision. Miracles of encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, no one here will return without a testimony. Those in need of jobs, give them jobs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open closed doors by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. Every time we submit miracle, uh, prayer requests like this, we do it out of revelation. It is, it is an act of faith. Submitting this before Jesus, we may not have the time to read everyone's challenge or what it is you are trusting the Lord for, but I want you to know by the grace of God that every time you are coming for a miracle service, always do well to write your expectations. And some people may not be able to make it here physically. You can always encourage them. I love to pray for people. I love to intercede for people. And we love to pray for people as a ministry. But this one was a divine instruction that God gave. That every miracle service without fail, we allow people to submit their prayer requests. And you cannot begin to imagine the testimonies that have come from this. Right now, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus Christ every force of darkness fighting this request we declare they let you go now. They let you go now. They let you go now. Number two, I decree and I declare over your life right now Every human agent who must come in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make these requests become testimonies, we compel their ministry over your life now. And anyone who says over their dead body for these requests to become testimonies, we declare, let the sword of judgment arise from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we turn every prayer request here to a supernatural testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me make a request. I want us to take one or two minutes. People are following from around the world who are very responsible believers. You have heard of the sad crisis that is happening in Plateau State, not only because we are sympathetic to what is happening, but because we have a responsibility. Kaduna State also, and a few parts around the eastern part, there has been all kinds of demonic things. We have a responsibility to lift up our voices wherever you are, as a responsible kingdom citizen. In one minute, please, I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Father, enough of bloodshed. We declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
judge wickedness judge wickedness is someone praying passionately we pray for the entire six geopolitical zones in this nation everywhere in this nation is important everybody has a right to life in the name of jesus call upon the god of heaven particularly for plateau state particularly for kaduna state like responsible ambassadors of the kingdom we hold on to the four horns of the altar and we declare wisdom for the government wisdom for the security agents lord in the name of jesus christ expose the works of wickedness expose evil in the name of jesus let there be supernatural protection let there be comfort for families that have sadly lost their loved ones in the name of jesus christ lord we pray let peace return to the plateau let peace return in kaduna state let it return everywhere across this nation where there is killing and violence arise oh god you are the prince of peace bring peace to our land bring peace to our nation bring peace to our region and every other place that has not been affected we declare that it will not be affected lord go ahead and bring peace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen remember that we are responsible kingdom citizens every time you hear that something is wrong somewhere don't wait until it comes to you don't make the mistake of esther esther was enjoying the palace whereas her man wanted to kill the whole jews and mordecai sent a word of warning said do not think if you are silent at this moment and they are done with us paraphrasing you will be spared he said could it be that god has brought you for such a time as this hallelujah we need peace in this nation in the name of jesus christ nothing you see the thing about war and crisis is not the fighting but the hunger that follows after when people lose their jobs they lose their businesses they lose their breadwinners all that they are left with is penury poverty pain and it will inevitably multiply crime rates and violence because when people especially young people when they are hungry no jobs destroyed disenfranchised all that is left is any suggestion the devil gives them this is why we must pray don't say it has not affected me please when you go back home be an intercessor pray the bible says pray for the peace of jerusalem again lord we declare let there be peace in this nation let there be peace in every troubled region by the power of the holy spirit but as for your prayer request in the name of the lord jesus i stand upon them as an act of faith and i declare it will never trouble you again it will never trouble you again in jesus name now i declare lord we are stepping into the month of september the last quarter of the year blood sucking spirits eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood whether by accident on the road whether by plane crashes by boat crashes by activities of wicked and evil men in the name of jesus may a mark of exemption come upon everyone here for a strange reason the ember months are known as months of catastrophe tragedies of all sorts but in the name of jesus may the god of heaven preserve you may the god of heaven preserve you and i declare over your life the favor of god that is his signature upon believers may that favor rest upon you hear me every troubled family here under the sound of my voice i speak to you peace be still everyone here who is in politics and government our parliamentarians people from the presidency we declare wisdom for you wisdom for you to help this nation in the name of jesus christ we pray for those in the legal profession by the power that raised christ from the dead wisdom to administer justice in the name of jesus every man and woman of god here 
the grace upon you to teach truth with power and accuracy in the name of Jesus Christ now every every spirit responsible for lack want financial hardship and poverty don't say it is not important this is a very important prayer I pray for you and all connected to you in the name of Jesus Christ may the season of drought come to an end in your life those trusting God for jobs I release my faith with you that doubles also for those trusting God for promotions in the name of Jesus may the Lord give it to you now any project you have begun that seems to be failing in your hands in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare receive the finisher's anointing the grace for completion comes on you in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for everyone here who has any kind of legal issue you are having whether land problem whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you even this week may the Prince of Peace step in and turn things around whatever has affected your prayer life so that your fire for prayer the discipline of prayer and intercession is no longer there may fresh fire come upon your altar now and then i pray for your word study life everything that has affected your passion for the word i am busy i am busy i pray that in the name of jesus let there be restoration of fire any wrong ungodly association at any level that is in your life driving you to walk against the will and the purposes of God be separated from those associations now in the name of Jesus Christ your believers within that territory please take note the state of any territory any nation any region is largely a reflection of the kind and the quality of believers within that territory this is very true every time a nation was in decadence every time a territory was in decadence God's first port of call was the believers or his covenant people God addressed the nation by addressing the church you have to pay attention to this this is very important every time a territory or a nation begins to plunge through some sort of decadence when God comes to solve the problem truly speaking he does not go to government he does not go to royalties he comes straight to the church and says what is going on church I kept you here and mandated you with an assignment are we together now this is very important all across Africa, like I said, and all across Europe, the U.S., we know that things are happening economically, things are happening politically like we've never seen before. And I can tell you this, the church has a role to play. The church needs to give the world an explanation as to why we have allowed darkness to move as though the reality of the finished work of Jesus were a lie. Are we together now? So, Ezekiel is caught up in the spirit and he's shown a vision. And it's a vision of a once great army that had now become bones. And the interesting thing is that the bones were so disjointed. You would look at the valley and almost not see the bones, but all of them were there. What scattered them so much? Because under a certain condition, those bones can come again. So every bone that was scattered was still there. Out of sight, but not beyond reach. There was a condition that was initiated. And the Bible says the bones began to come again. And at the end of it, here was an exceeding great army standing. For tonight... I want to, 
I want us to work together as the body of Christ over South Africa and over Africa generally and then across the world. Let's work together as I identify three major factors. Please write this down. Three major factors that I believe have affected the quality of believers. The quality of the spiritual products that have come out of our churches, out of our assemblies, out of our spiritual platforms. And remember, I teach as one who is a son of the soil. I am an African myself. And so I teach from a standpoint of love. I teach as one who is a co-laborer. Are we together now? I have only come to strengthen the hand of the body of Christ that together we rise to the next level that God has destined for us. But we must pay attention and we must be honest. Listen to me. What you are about to learn tonight for many of you is a confirmation of what the Spirit has been showing you. For many of you it may be a correction of your approach to life and ministry and even spirituality. But for all of us together there are things to learn. So that our children and our children's children will be able to preserve the power, the grace and the potency of the name of the Lord. Are we still together? So let's continue. Three factors that have affected our territories haven't agreed that the quality, the quality of the believers within a territory defines in large proportion the quality of that territory. Economically speaking, politically speaking, etc. Number one. What is the first problem? What is the first issue? What is the first factor that has affected the quality of believers in today's church? Number one, the first real factor is that most believers or most people, most church people, if I would use that expression, they have no genuine encounter with God. Now, I, I, this, this, I, I, let me apologize in advance. Don't feel bad when these things you just accept it as God trying to help you. Because those he loves, he chastises. Are we together now? The absence of genuine encounter with God from the pulpit to the pew is a major problem. For as long as we do not have a genuine encounter with God, the products that come out of that aberrated Christian experience cannot be potent enough to host God within a territory. Please pay attention. The plane is only preparing to lift. No genuine encounters with God. You see, the spiritual protocol, look up please. The spiritual protocol is every time God calls you, He does not send you. Your first assignment is not to go and work for Him. Every time He calls you, the formula is follow me. I am your object, not ministry, not business, not church. When God calls you, He says follow me. When He makes you, then He sends you. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. Listen now, pay attention. Come, follow me. Follow me. Your calling is not to a pulpit. Your calling is not to a marketplace. Believe me. Your calling is not to politics. Your calling is to Jesus. What you call pulpit, marketplace, politics is just the geography of your weakness. After you have effectively fulfilled your calling, The absence of a genuine encounter with Jesus is what has produced the plethora of issues that we have first from the pulpit and then across membership and then by extension to society. When God called Moses, when you read Exodus chapter 3, Exodus 33, you read all these scriptures, they tell you that when Moses, he saw a bush that was burning, and would not be consumed. Guess what he says. I will turn aside and see this great sight. When God saw that he had turned aside. He said Moses. 
take off your shoes for where you stand this holy ground and a discourse began and at the end of it god said now you are crying for a revelation of me i am that i am know me first before you go and stand before pharaoh because pharaoh will ask you who sent you are we blessed listen to me it is important that we have genuine encounters with god isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13 let's hurry up for time isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13 repeated also in matthew chapter 15 and verse 8 isaiah 29 and 13 any of them please just give it to us media so that we can make progress it says wherefore the lord said for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do do honor me but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men in other words they draw near with their mouth but in in reality their hearts are far from me In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, oh, once again, dear South Africa, Africa and the globe, let's reintroduce Jesus. That the foundation of the believer's experience is not miracles, it's not signs, it's not wonders, it's not the prophetic, it's not the apostolic, it's not even revelation. The foundation is Jesus. Hear me, the formula for any life that must excel is that in the beginning, God. If it becomes in the beginning fame, in the beginning ministry, in the beginning a desire for signs and wonders, you have corrupted the formula. God cannot be Omega until He's allowed to be Alpha. Don't allow something else to be Alpha and then ask Him to come and finish what you started. He only finishes what He started. He is only Omega over what he was alpha over please pay attention genuine encounters with god can i tell you this there is a way that when you encounter god you will love him more than preaching you will love him more than business you will love him more than politics genuine encounter with god one of the pillars that can allow men host god at a territorial level genuine encounter many believers today i tell you sincerely many people in church cannot exactly tell if they are saved or not when we started with god in fact we were made to write dates when we gave our lives to Christ. I don't know, is there someone here who remembers? You can't arbitrarily hope you are saved. Wish you were saved. Imagine that you are saved. If you are saved, you are saved. If you are not saved. And there is a spiritual formula. We are not left to guess whether you are saved. No, there is a formula. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 please give us acts chapter 4 and verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other body of christ let's look at this and remind ourselves for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved you cannot say you are saved when you have not encountered Jesus. It's not Jesus and a group of delegates that save you. No. When it has to do with salvation, there are no delegates. It is Jesus or Jesus alone. If you have met and routed through any other person that you gave your life to, according to the authority of scripture, you are not saved. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 the absence of a genuine encounter with jesus is one of the first reasons why we have this level of decadence 
that is in the similitude of Ezekiel's vision. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Can I be honest with you? It is not everything you believe about Jesus that equals salvation. There are specific things you have to believe about Jesus to be saved. Believing Jesus is a good man does not save you. Believing Jesus is the founder of an honorable religion does not save you. There are specific details about Jesus. You must believe in him crucified. You must believe he died. You must believe he rose again for our justification. You must believe today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. If you do not believe this, you are not a Christian. It's as honest and sincere as that. We may differ, denominationally speaking, across different schools of thought. We may differ um, across several things, I understand. But it is in this one thing that we cannot allow ourselves to differ. Because if we lose the revelation of this, there is no Christianity again. Here and there we may argue, we may disagree with one another across certain doctrinal issues. That's all right. But on this one thing, anyone who names the name of Christ must agree that this is the formula for salvation. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the lordship of Jesus and then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible declares, thou shalt be saved. Even if you fall down under the anointing and stand up and you don't confess this, you are not saved. You had a powerful service, but you are not saved. Can I be sincere with you? It's important we have to be sure of the admission process again. How there are all kinds of inventions as to this Jesus thing. And while we are a people of love, it is important that we preserve the destiny of a generation by reminding us again that everything starts with Jesus. More than preacher, more than apostle Joshua Selman. Jesus, Jesus. Listen, keep quiet and listen carefully. Jesus. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Listen to me. The more you know God, I tell you the truth, the more you will not even want to be the one seen. The formula is that I may decrease so that you will increase. The obsession to be known is proof we have not encountered the God of the Bible. Believe me when I tell you this. Listen. Many of you here are medical doctors. There is a way you look at a patient and certain attributes in that patient show the deficiency of certain vitamins. You can look at the patient and know immediately with pin drop accuracy that this patient lacks vitamin C. There is a way an individual can behave. You can know immediately that there are things that are not in place. An obsession to be known. It doesn't matter who is pushed away. No. When you know Jesus and you love him, it is an honor to represent him. Whether in ministry, whether in business. Can I be honest with you? The dominion that we have in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. We, our dominion is shared dominion. You want to understand how shared dominion works? Look at the moon and the sun. The moon does not have any light of its own, but it still glows. It glows to the degree to which it aligns to the sun. 
None of us have any power of our own, grace of our own. Everything we have is derived from what we have received. And let me tell you this. Everybody, and I encourage preachers, we must be unashamed to let the world know how helpless we are without Him. It is good that people honor us. It is good that people bless us. But please, for God's sake, let them know that Jesus is the one who is Lord. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. Listen, I can tell you this. Until we get to a point where our encounter with God produces genuine brokenness. Brokenness. Brokenness that brings you to a point where your obsession is to see Jesus revealed and see Jesus glorified. That is it. That becomes the anthem, the motto for your life. Why are you in business more than just making money to see Jesus revealed, to see Jesus glorified? Why are you in ministry, dear man of God, more than wanting to show that God called me? That is an inferior reason to be in ministry. And I was taken to a valley that once had a great army. What happened? Could it be that if the army kept focus on the one who gave them life, they would not deteriorate to become bones? The first thing we see from these bones is there must have been rebellion from the life source. If the voice could bring them back, then it meant that voice was what would keep them alive. They lost touch with the voice. That's why they became bones. Oh, may I never get to a point where I make people believe that outside of God, by my will, I can bless and lift people. Joshua Selman does not have that power. Everything you see is derived from our relationship with God. Let's return back to the foundational truths. Otherwise, we are going to destroy our children and our children's children. They will not even know what they are called into. Please sit down. Can these bones live again? The answer is yes. If they pay attention to the voice that once gave them life. Can I be honest with you? There is a difference between pride. Pride and confidence. Your confidence is acknowledging that which God has graciously made you become through Christ. And the Bible says, don't cast it away because it has a great recompense of reward. But there is pride. You know what pride is? Pride is coming to a point where you become vocal through your life and through your voice that there is no government above you. The moment you get to that point, the devil does not need to attack you. You are finished. The very justice system of God is what will judge you. Are we learning something tonight? Please hear me. Many of us, younger people in ministry, let me encourage you sincerely. Never fight the body, but be careful who you listen to. Many of us have listened to... And, and it doesn't have to be bad people. No. No. I can be a sincere person loving you with all my heart, but if I ask you to enter a car and I cannot drive, you and all your children and your wife and your entire family, sincerity may not take you to your destination. The absence of genuine encounters. Do you know... When God called me, and I'm sure that Apostle Felix will tell you, and many other people, when God, when I started my work with God, SAS, it was never about ministry. 
I never even knew. Most of the people God is marvelously using today, ask them how many times they ran away from the call of God. They didn't want all that trouble. They said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I just want to love you and to serve you. And God said, I have called you. But right now, please look at me. Look at me. I'm preaching to Africa. We need to return back to our passion. Ministry can become idolatry if God is out of it. Business can become idolatry if God is out of it. Genuine encounters with God. Gone are the days where people will lock themselves for one week and just say, Lord, I want to know you. I'm not looking for power for a conference. It is you I'm looking for. No. No. We didn't study our Bibles just because we were looking for sermons. No. No. We truly, genuinely, desperately wanted him. Let's go back and re-examine ourselves. He told Cain and Abel, he said, if you have done it right, will I not accept it? Society today is sadly a reflection of the carelessness and the nonchalance of the church. While we slept... Satan came in and planted all kinds of things. The question again is, can these bones live? You have heard it in my teachings. You celebrated me so graciously when I came. Thank God for your apostle, the man of God and his dear wife. Thank God for all the servants of God. But I want you to look at me. Behind this man you see, there is absolutely nothing out of the mercy of God. Listen, this is not an expression of weakness. When you make statements like this, you are very powerful. It was weakness that kills strength. When you see strength, beware, strength is not very strong. Weakness is what kills strength on the cross. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon you and finds strength, it goes back. It must find you incapacitated in yourself that God becomes your completion. Listen to me. Let our altars and our pulpit once again become platforms for salvation. Let our messages once again, among the many things that we teach, do not teach as if sinners are no longer coming. It is good to mature and build people. But while you teach the different dimensions of the kingdom, still go back and remember, one sinner came to church today. Who needs to encounter Jesus? And if that sinner does not encounter Jesus, that will be the entrance point of evil in that church. They are the ones who tomorrow will be appointed positions because of longevity in the church without encounter. Please pay attention. Genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, let me rush for sake of time. So three factors we're examining tonight that have been responsible for the current state of the church and by extension the nation as seen prophetically in the vision of Ezekiel. Number one, the absence of genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, very quickly. Ready for number two? Very low level of discipleship. Oh, this is a concept you do not hear again in the body of Christ. Younger believers don't even know what this is. What is discipleship? Discipleship is the methodical approach. A scriptural and methodical approach to growth and maturity as far as spiritual things are concerned. The name, the doctrinal name given to the pathway that leads an individual who comes into Christ to now grow and have stature and maturity is discipleship. Discipleship is not a religious thing. People have made religion out of it, I understand. But intrinsically, 
discipleship is the methodical approach please look up did you know that the growth and the maturity of the saints was not supposed to be guesswork um do we have any medical doctor here please stand sir do we have any other medical doctor here any at all thank you did you by any means go to the same college of medicine with that lady you're not sure now how come both of you or all of you can accurately do the same thing even though you've never met yourselves because of the formula that was used to train you you didn't have to know yourselves that means the manual is greater than the lecturers that taught you so although you were from one region and you were from one region but both of you are called doctors and you can actually meet for the first time in a surgery room and not doubt yourself because of the dexterity of the manual that was used to train you now please sit down sit down sit down how come when i call a man christian a stand up christian b stand up christian c stand up and all three come to sit down you cannot even understand what they are discussing so what is wrong there must be we have to probe into the manual that has been used for that training or we have to probe into the sincerity of the lecturer please sit down please pay attention there is listen there is a cost content that is given for the maturity of the believers and it is not an invention of any preacher the cost content that has already been predefined to make any believer become mature the name of that cost content is doctrine doctrine is the cost content allocated for the building and the maturity of the saints doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a a, a predefined body of knowledge that helps the student become something exact doctrina a body of knowledge now respectfully speaking what happens now, remember we agreed that all our teaching is not to point fingers if you are pointing fingers at anybody you are not part of us in this conference now you have to understand there is no tell them we are all a family of faith very mature very intelligent people who are as one body helping to solve what is wrong with that body please sit down Are you learning yes. see let me teach you something the zenith of transformation is not enlightenment it is love we know you are most transformed not through the communication of knowledge alone if your knowledge grows as your love depletes it is not the holy spirit who is responsible for that building because if god builds you the more you know the more your love life rises to match your revelation so that you dispense the truths that you know from a standpoint of love the love factor is what validates that god taught you be learning all these things this is a conference discipleship second timothy chapter three my goodness wherever we stop tonight we'll share the grace and come tomorrow this is a school of the spirit second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 very quickly if we can second timothy and that from a child everybody say child so you are supposed to begin to learn the ways of god from a child if you become an adult before you start time is already against you you have to create extra lessons to quickly because what you need to learn you need to learn it on time and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture are we together which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in jesus christ to 17 now all scripture he's still talking to that child is given by god by inspiration of God and is profitable for please talk to me for first doctrine before reproof 
There cannot be reproof and correction when there is no basis. The basis is doctrine. Then from the lens of doctrine, we can now adjust the excesses. The excesses, correcting the... This is why... Let me balance this. Oh dear. We have other sessions. Let me not... Please pray for me that we just... Do you know, maybe this may be a word from God to just help someone tonight. Not everybody has the grace to correct the body of Christ. Just because you see things going wrong, does not mean you just stand up and start talking. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Listen. This is South Africa. Do you just go as a citizen and arrest anybody for doing wrong? There is an authorized system. Is that true? Licensed. And when they come, the first thing they show you is their license. Do you know what your license is? There is a requisite level of love you must have for the body. If not, you will never be given the grace to correct that body. You cannot correct the body from a standpoint of antagonism, from a standpoint of bitterness. Your motive is already corrupted yourself. Everybody say discipleship. Please shout it. Say discipleship. Do you know why the educational systems in most of our top universities globally work? Harvard, Yale, Oxford. Do you know why? Because they insist on maintaining standards of what is being taught. They have all kinds of quality control systems that they will not bend to. So you can trust the products that come out from there. The primary reason why the educational systems, respectfully speaking, in Africa continue to plunge is because there is no insistence on, there is no standardization. So all kinds of compromises can come. That is how it is spiritually. Can I be honest with you? When you understand doctrine, you see, the thing about spiritual growth and knowledge is that believers do, do not just learn anything spiritual to grow. There is a sequence. When a believer comes to Christ and gets born again, the next thing to teach that believer, doctrinally speaking, is not success. If you teach that person success from that standpoint, you have only given the flesh what to manifest. That person will most likely not last. That person needs to understand the rudiments of godliness, repentance from dead works, the power of character. Now, when you teach that person, by the time you come into the series on success, there is already a background. He knows you have tamed the flesh. So... The teaching on success now comes to a mature believer who understands the purpose of influence, the purpose of wealth. We cannot randomly teach anything just because we find it from scripture. Look at me please. Again, let me use an example with our educational system. Assume with me for instance that you find a student in the university, in college. Today you run to the faculty of engineering for lecture. Tomorrow you run to the faculty of medicine or the college of medicine. Next tomorrow you go to arts. Are you in the university? Yes. Will you graduate? Because your knowledge is not methodical. You are in the system, but you are not growing. When they award you a certificate or a degree, it's because you have stayed in keeping with the, the sequence of the growth across a field of study. They don't give you degree for everything. They give you degree for the field that you chose to stay on course for. Listen to me. Apostle Felix, if an average believer is called right now, at random, let's call an average believer who has been in church for say two years, three years, five years, and you stand here and we interview you based on the foundational doctrines of scripture, you will be surprised and even weep that the average believer does not even have an under... What do you know about prayer? What do you know about salvation? Can I get someone saved and hand him over to you and say, I will return back in two years. I should meet a general. I should meet a champion. Do you know how to... What is the next course? Are we blessed? 
That's why after this conference, you should come to meet your man of God and hug him and say, Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving an opportunity for the body of Christ, not only in South Africa, but across. Can I be honest with you? Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. Every family problem was first a problem that was not solved by the church, which is the light. Nothing starts at a national level. Everything only manifests at a national level. It is very easy to change a territory. You change a nation by changing regions, by changing communities, by changing families, by working on the church. Africa is about the most religious continent across the globe. Am I right on that? And can I be honest with you? The average church in Africa attends, has at least contacts with a spiritual leader once or twice every week. If what we are producing is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord, there must be an unashamed examination. Let's examine the course content. Let's examine the state of the lecturer. First, there are other issues, but they are not as powerful as we make them. Satan knows this. And he will do anything to keep us arguing and fighting one another. Addressing the issues that are the obvious, but not the right ones. Doctrine. I've had the honor of praying for many institutions and many businesses and many companies. And for some of them, I see the dexterity around their administrative system. When I came in here, the excellence of your protocol, I saw all of the people, uh, uh, the wonderful, your, your, your whole reception team here. Do you know why these people are like that? They are trained. They didn't guess their way on what to do. Now, watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please look up if you can find it. Who asked him to come? Who asked him to come and pick it? Why didn't you come? Do you not love your pastor? Why didn't you come? It's not your jurisdiction. You were trained. Are you seeing this now? Anytime there is no training, there will be disorder. I just threw this arbitrarily and he knows I put pressure on his office and his training. Now his ability to do this has proven that this man is a good shepherd. Let's sit down. I was glad, thank you. When they said unto me, you see why it's really, this should be the basis of your confidence when you invite people to church. You invite them with this passion, knowing that just one service. You see that now? And you tell them, please come to the house of God. You will find wisdom there. Listen, the church should not be or look like a nuisance to civilization. No. The contents that we give are profitable all wise. It's not just the spiritual lives of the people. We communicate ideas that transform people and eventually help people to build the nation. The church is not just some spiritual nuisance. No. We are a blessing to everybody. We are the principal shapers of the spiritual convictions of any territory. So there is a serious discipleship problem. We must examine the things that we teach. Hebrews chapter 6 talks to us about the doctrinal pillars of the Christian faith. Doctrinal pillars. Six of them it lists. And then it says let us go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation of doctrine, of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection, eternal judgment, etc. Hallelujah. We must be methodically built. Number three, let me hurry up for time. What is the third factor 
that is responsible for the decadence of the church like prophetically seen in the vision of Ezekiel. Are you ready for this? Number three is that there are few models or references. Few models. In certain territories, there are almost no models. Few models or references that can inspire people and show people pragmatically how to be a Christian. Can I tell you this? Every territory strives to the degree to which they find models that reflect their aspirations. Business people excel because there are individuals who are seen as models. When a territory does not have models, men and women who have paid the price to become worthy references that you can draw from their lives the inspiration to continue, you can literally use their lives as a matching script to correct yourself as you move. The Bible says, Woe to a city whose king is a child. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The absence of worthy references and models. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them. Followers of them. So you follow him, but you can also follow them. When there is him and the them are not there, the people become confused. There must be worthy references. So that when you are talking about integrity, the Holy Spirit can use the image of an individual to help you and say, it is possible, keep moving, don't bend. That a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and still move forward. When your life is, when you are prayerless, the Holy Ghost can use the face of someone. Question, how many models are in Africa that can be used? I'm not talking about blamelessness. I'm talking about the sincerity of press by the grace of God to become a reference. Longevity ministry does not make you a model. It is the dexterity of your track record. Are we together? Transformation is difficult when there are no references. Global leaders will tell you this. You can't change into nothing. There has to be a reference. For a long time, climbing Mount Everest was possible. But because there was no one who had done it, there was no model to create inspiration. Many people believed. And someone did it. And someone did it. Now you go and check the records. How many people have climbed? Many, many business people. Usually, when you find a territory that has one businessman that rises, becomes a global voice. Now he can become a reference. They can follow his footsteps. Can I tell you this? Until we find solid Christians in South Africa, in Africa, Christians indeed. There will be a very major problem. And if you have only one or two or three people... That reference is too small. You need many people. There is a reason why Jesus came and gathered 12 people. Gathered 72. Gathered 120. He said, I am making you witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over that claim. It's amazing that in Ezekiel 37, as I attempt to round up for tonight, when God said, can these bones live? The prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophet, if I speak alone, even though the bones are hearing me, they will not come. I need you. Repeat what I have said. I am God, but I designed the system that as far as it has to do with the earth, there must be a man who will echo what I am saying. And he said unto me, 
The Bible did not say, and he said. He said unto someone. This is what I desire, but I need you to make it happen. Prophesy. So this is one of the strategies for the restoration of decadence. The power of words and the power of information. The Bible tells us that in this kingdom, men live through food and words. Food and words. Prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, don't lie about it. If they are dry, tell them they are dry. You will come back to life, but first admit you are dry bones. And then he says, O ye dry bones, I have diagnosed your condition, but there is hope. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I tell you this? In the midst of all the things that are happening in the body of Christ, in the midst of all that we see across Africa and society, let me bring you a word of comfort. Do not make a mistake of believing that the church is dead or finished. No. I can tell you there is a formula, there is a strategy that can bring that dead church back to life. South Africa, hear me. The church in this nation and the church across Africa is in a very defining moment. There are all kinds of shifts happening. But find rest. Jesus is still the builder of the church. So a day can come we will teach our children and our children's children. And tell them once upon a time there was a period of decline. But hallelujah, Jesus, the Lord of the church... That one day our children will be able to go to schools and learn the things that are consistent with not just educational standards but faith. That one day, a day will come, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, where it won't really matter which church you go to in South Africa. The same fire, the same salvation. That one day, Men of God can see themselves and sit down and say you are a brother indeed. Because we would have laid aside all of these attributes of the flesh. And God would have walked and built us. You ask about the next move of God. He's asking you, can these bones leave? And these bones leave. Please hear me. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, the first two or three verses talk about God giving Jonah an instruction to go to Nineveh. Jonah was so hot and angry, he ran away until he entered into the belly of the fish. Are we together? When he came out in repentance and brokenness, Chapter 3 from verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him again. Please give us Jonah 3 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Africa, that great city. God still calls a place that needs repentance a great city. Oh, come on. Someone did not see a prophetic word there. Africa, I know we have gone through a lot. Yes, sir. Politically, economically, spiritually. I know you may have been disappointed in we the men of God here and there. But can I tell you, hear what the Lord still calls Africa. That great continent. That great nation, South Africa. Now you understand why I started the way I started. If he says it, he will do it. So if he has called Africa the great nation, I want to tell you this. Africa will arise again. Hmm. But what is the call? I'm wrapping up. 
Ephesians 5 14 three quick verses I want to do something prophetic tonight now please pay attention I'm going to read these three verses prophetically um, I saw Colin he's the one I know that my man where is he he's gone yes you will do me something here when I read these three verses please permit my bias but I want you to sing for me the national anthem of South Africa Hallelujah. Prophetically, it's a chauffeur to the realm of the spirit that from house of treasures there are bones. Did he not say, as when I prophesied, I heard a sound? Can I tell you this? The blood of many have gone for the gospel. Many today have died. Some of you in ministry do not even know the history of the move of God within your region. It didn't come at a platter of gold. Go and study church history. People cried. They lost their lives. Missionaries came. Some died. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. South Africa, hear the prophetic word. Ministries, business people. Hear what the Lord is saying. Wherefore he saith, it is true that you want to see the next move of God. It is true that the bones can live, but not under any condition. Here is what God is asking you to do. Man of God, businessman, politician, awake thou that sleepest. Awake from that spiritual slumber. Don't give excuses. You will not birth glory that way. Awake awake some of you need to go back to ministry 101 some of you need to go back to christianity 101 and say honestly i've not gotten this thing right i need to make it right second scripture very quickly first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 first samuel very quickly we're out of time first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 3 0 2 and verse 30 First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now, the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, South Africa, another word for you from the Lord. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me, go and read through history. Any region, individual, nation, continent that ever despises God is a matter of time. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You, one more time. You are God, say, you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Second Chronicles chapter 7, popular scripture. That has been used by revivalists from verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. Second Chronicles 7. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locust to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. Please read with me in concert. Ready? Read. If... Hold on. He's talking to his people. This instruction is not to strangers. They are his people. If my people, which are called by my name, number one, we're looking at the protocol for restoration. Number one, 
they shall humble themselves lord i accept as an individual i do not know you i accept the mistakes that i've made as a parent as a pastor as a leader there is one thing i know about god you can use brokenness to attract the attention of god for as long as we continue to act like a people who know what we are doing, even in the midst of our confusion, God will leave us to continue in our pride. He looks for people who are genuinely broken. I don't know about you, but I have learned to come unashamed before God. When I come before Him, I don't come as Apostle Joshua Selman. That's nonsense. Your boy is still here. The one you lifted... The one you took from nothing. Oh God, I am still here. Thank God for the applause of kings and nobles. But may I ever remain that child before you. God is speaking to someone here. We are wrapping up. Humble themselves. Please give us that scripture. Number two, and pray. What kind of prayer do you think you will pray in this occasion? Prayer of genuine repentance. Not some prideful prayer and saying, God, I'm putting my hand in my pocket as your colleague. I, I've been waiting for you. No, sir. Brokenness. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I'm showing you a formula. Bones, if you will come back, you must be willing to listen again. It was your lack of listening that depleted you. The prodigal son, for as long as he was under the influence of his father's voice, he experienced so much. When he left and there was no more voice, he depleted till he began to feed with swine. Let's finish up. And seek my face more than money. I believe in prosperity. Oh. Don't confuse what I'm teaching now. I believe in prosperity and its ability to help to give you a life of comfort and to advance the purposes of God. But I love you more than it. Oh, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. How could I exalt money more than him? How could I exalt ministry more than him? Where were these things when the devil was almost destroying me? Can I? Listen, God is speaking to us tonight. Some of you, this may be the reason why you have not seen the power and the grace of God. You love him, but how much? Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Please, let's finish up. And turn from your wicked ways. If you pray and don't turn, you are still a sinner. The prodigal son said, how he came to himself. Africa. Let's come to ourselves. If we want to fulfill that prophetic word of being that continent that will return Christ back. I'm speaking to world over. The world. But please permit my bias. Passionately communicating this to our dear continent. Africa was now feeding with swine. And Africa said, I, I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here today feeding with swine. I will arise. I cannot change myself, but I can go to where change will happen. I may not be able to save myself, but I can come to church. I may not have the power to drive those demons, but I can come to a man of God who has been graced. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. I'm showing you repentance. Repentance requires action. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the moment he was leaving his place of decadence, the father too was leaving his house. They met somewhere on the way. Can I tell you this? The greatness you are looking for is also looking for you. But he's not looking for the rebel. 
that is at that place is looking for the one on his way back businessman hear me you have tried everything you know to do is a spiritual problem it's not just a financial problem you have too many friends who would have brought you out there is a hand that you are against then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land south africa please stand For step by step, you are leading us, and we will follow you. One more minute, Shalagata Barakatos. Lord, we repent of our pride. We repent of our lusts. We repent of our hypocrisy. We repent from putting our strength in ourselves. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, the Bible says. And lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways acknowledge Him. Lord, we repent from the pulpit to the pew. We repent from our places of parliament, even to the marketplace. We repent from our homes. As a continent, we cry upon you for mercy again. You have asked us a question tonight. Son of man, can Africa live again? Can South Africa live again? Can the nations in Africa live again? And indeed, we say, only thou knowest. But by the authority of scripture we turn that question into a prayer and everyone begin to pray that prayer now africa leave again south africa leave again nigeria leave again zimbabwe leave again malawi leave again is someone prophesying we are declaring leave again leave again out of the ashes of our decadence leave again the church is praying leave again putting aside 
our denominational barriers. We come as a people who love Jesus and we speak all oh, dry bones. Leave again. Leave again. In politics, leave again. In business, leave again. Economically, leave again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our children begin to call upon the name of the Lord again. Hallelujah. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore him set. And men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Cry before him. Cry before him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen carefully. Apologize for the stretch. But the last thing I'm going to do here tonight. There are people scattered inside. And probably the other halls that have been put. We cannot end this conference without giving you room to make it genuinely right with Jesus. More than a church goer. More than a bearer, please stand if you can, of Christian names. I apologize for the stretch, but this is the protocol that restores the ark. If it is God we desire to see again in our land. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. All those who are not within this auditorium, when the altar call is made, please officials, if you can just show them somewhere they can stand, so we still respect the principles um, as far as um, gatherings and all of that is concerned. But for those who are in this hall, hearing me preach, you're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus desperately as a matter of life and death. Christianity is nothing without Him. Or you are here and you are saying, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but sincerely my life has gone haywire. And right now I do not even know what I stand for. I need restoration and revival these two groups of people without having to bump on yourselves please come gently and i want you to come and stand at the aisles here i'm going to count one to five please do that quickly if you are still thinking about it sit down on your seat but if you are here and you mean it sincerely please don't pretend this is jesus some of you are crying one please come to jesus please come to jesus I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. I'm going to hold the hands of your man of God. And we're going to be praying for you. You don't have to kneel for, for space. Listen, Jesus said this. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying. You are before him, Jesus. <laughs> the one who can save to the uttermost. In your salvation is the salvation of your children. In your salvation. He says, for this promise is unto you. And your children and your children's children. As many as are far off, even those that the Lord Himself will call. Those of you who are in front, please lift your right hand high to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. 
Tonight, Tonight I, receive you I receive you as my Lord, as my, Lord my, Savior, my Savior, and my King. And my King. I, receive I receive eternal life, eternal life into, my spirit. into my spirit. I receive, I receive the, abundance of grace, the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and, gift of righteousness. and, I, declare and I declare that I reign. That I reign with Christ, with Christ. From, today from today until forever, until forever. I am a child of God, I'm a child of God. No, going back. no going back hallelujah, hallelujah. please keep those hands lifted your pastor your apostle the shepherd and your father is going to make a declaration over you and when he makes that declaration if there is a place you go to that's fine otherwise I'm sure God bless you uh, we bring Jesus to your screen Jesus the same yesterday today and forever in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 scripture helping us to know that God has not changed He's the same yesterday today and forever he will not change because of you no your situation cannot make the word of the Lord look as a lie because the scripture said it is of two mutable things and which it is impossible for God to lie God cannot lie not about your situation not about your ministry not about your career not about your health um, you might be passing through difficulty in maybe some of the projects you might be passing through difficulty in your health or maybe it could be a terminal disease the bible said i am the lord thy god that healed thee trust the lord for a divine healing because god cannot change he is the same yesterday today and forever so ensure your faith is steady in god ensure you believe absolutely in the healing power of the holy spirit and you will receive it surely there is an end to that sickness there is an end to that calamity there is an end to everything that seems not to be good in your life we bring to you the word of the lord via his servant apostle joshua selman on this channel reflector hub tv do ensure you share this message to your loved ones so that this accuracy and strengthening words will get to them god bless you